Now, what if we were to tell you that the Taj Mahal may be hiding something very significant? This modern wonder was said to have been built in the name of love in memory of the famous emperor's late wife. Built in such a spectacular fashion that over 350 years after it was built, it is still one of the seven most famous landmarks on this planet. The history of the Crown Palace was seemingly pretty clear cut, standing majestically on the banks of a river. The Taj Mahal is synonymous to love. The name Taj Mahal was thought to have derived from the name of the emperor's wife, Mumtaz Mahal, but there is information that has come to light that is so stunning it is almost unbelievable and completely contradicts the origins of this place. The purity of the white marble, the exquisite ornamentation, precious gemstones used, and its picturesque location all make a visit to the Taj Mahal gain a place among the most sought-after tours in the world. At the brink of dawn, when the first rays of the sun hits the dome of this epic monument, it radiates like a heavenly abode, and then at dusk, basking in the glory of the moon, it shines like a perfectly carved diamond appearing as if straight out of some magical tale. Nothing short of an architectural masterpiece and certainly ranked among the greatest monuments in the world, but what is the real story of the Taj Mahal? Wait till you hear this. 20,000 laborers are supposed to have worked for 22 years during the emperor's reign in building the Taj Mahal. Had this been true, there should have been available paper design drawings heaps of labor muster rolls, daily expenditure sheets, bills and receipts of materials ordered, and commissioning orders. There is not even a scrap of paper of this kind. It is therefore blundering historians. Lazy archaeologists and careless tourists who are responsible for hustling the world into believing the story of the ancient wonder, when in actual fact the true history is seemingly lost to us, and we are going to tell you why. Contrary to what visitors are made to believe, the Taj Mahal is not a Islamic mausoleum, but an ancient Shiva temple known as Tejo Mahalaya, which the fifth generation Mongol emperor commandeered from the then Maharaja of Jayapur. The Taj Mahal should therefore be viewed as a temple palace and not as a tomb. When told you are visiting a temple palace, you won't fail to notice its annexes, ruined defensive walls, hillocks, moats, hundreds of rooms, terraces, multi-stored towers, secret sealed chambers, guest room, stables, the trident pinnacle of the dome, and the sacred esoteric Hindu letter OM, carved on the exterior of the wall of the Sanctum Sanctorum in his book, Taj Mahal, The Real Story, the author says the love story between emperor and empress is a fairy tale created by court sycophants, blundering historians, and sloppy archaeologists. Not a single royal chronicle of the emperor's time corroborates the love story. Furthermore, there are documents suggesting the Taj Mahal predates this era significantly and was a temple palace dedicated to Lord Shiva. For example, Professor Marvin Miller of New York took a few samples from the riverside doorway of the Taj. Carbon dating test revealed that the door was nearly 400 years older than expected and maybe even older. European traveler Johann Albert Mandelslo, who visited Agra in 1638, only seven years after the Empress's death, and he describes the life of the city in his memoirs but he makes no reference to the Taj Mahal being built. The writings of Peter Mundy, an English visitor to Agra, also within a year of the Empress's death, and he is also suggesting that the Taj was a noteworthy building well in existence before this time. There are also a number of design and architectural inconsistencies that support the belief that the Taj Mahal being a typical Hindu temple rather than a mausoleum. Many rooms in the Taj Mahal have remained sealed since this time and are still inaccessible to the public. It is entirely possible the reason for this is because they contain a headless statue of Shiva and other objects commonly used for worship rituals in Hindu temples. 
There are persons who are connected with the repair and the maintenance of the Taj who have seen the ancient sacred Shiva and other idols sealed in the thick walls and in chambers in the secret sealed redstone stories below the marble basement. The Archaeological Survey of India is keeping discreetly, politely, and diplomatically silent about it to the point of dereliction of its own duty to probe into hidden historical evidence. Fearing political backlash, the Indian government tried to have Oak's book withdrawn from the bookstores, and to this day, it is unavailable. It isn't even available on Amazon to this day in any format. There are claims that the government of India have threatened the Indian publisher with dire consequences. Incredibly, the only original source of the claim for the Taj Mahal to be the emperor's creation is an inaccurate and misinterpreted journal written by 17th century French jewel merchant Jean-Baptiste Travenier, and all other subsequent accounts were either based on Travenier's unverified statements or were sycophantic additions after this period in time. A letter from the prince to his father, the emperor, is featured in at least three chronicles regarding a special resting place for the empress, his mother. In that letter, the prince records in 1652 itself that the several buildings in the fancied burial place of his mother was seven-storied and were so old that they were all leaking while the dome had developed a crack on the northern side. He therefore ordered immediate repairs to the buildings at his own expense while recommending to the emperor that more elaborate repairs be carried out later. This is the proof that during this period of time the Taj complex was so old as to need immediate repairs. The Emperor's official chronicler states that the Empress body was laid to rest in a lofty sky-high palace with a majestic dome. The ex-Maharaja of Jaipur retains in his secret personal Kapad Dwara collection two orders from the Emperor dated December 18, 1633, requisitioning the Taj building complex. This was such a blatant action that the then ruler of Jaipur was ashamed to make the document public. A Sanskrit inscription too supports the conclusion that the Taj originated as a Shiva temple. Wrongly termed as the Beitshwar inscription, it refers to the raising of a crystal white Shiva temple so alluring that Lord Shiva once enshrined in it decided never to return to Mount Kalish, his usual abode. That inscription dated 1155 AD was removed from the Taj Mahal garden at the emperor's orders. Historians and archaeologists have blundered in terming the inscription the Beitshwar inscription when the record doesn't say that it was found by Beitshwar. It ought in fact to be called the Tejo Mahalia inscription because it was originally installed in the Taj garden before it was uprooted and cast away. A clue to the tampering is found on pages 216 through 217, volume 4 of Archaeological Survey of India Reports, published 1874, stating that a great square black ballistic pillar which, with the base and capital of another pillar, now is the grounds of Agra. It is well known, once stood in the garden of the Taj. Further quotes from the journals of Tamerlan and Babur show that this palace predates the said construction period and also points to the notable absence of any claim at all by the emperor himself for its construction. Tavernier's claim of having seen the beginning and end of the entire construction work being carried out during his time here is refuted by simply pointing out that the enormous discrepancies between the three periods during which Tavernier stayed here between 1641 and 1663 and the period over which it is claimed to have been constructed, 1631 to 1653. It is also disputed that the latter part of the presumed construction period as being implausible as they coincide with the leader's incarceration, according to all accounts, what Travenier saw was actually the work to convert it to a mausoleum and not the original construction itself, and advances convincing details on construction costs and labor requirements to support his theory. 
The Empress's real name was Arjuman Banu Begum, and she was conferred the horrific title Mumtaz ul Zamani by her father in law, but never Mumtaz Mahal, and it is contended that she acquired the addition Mahal posthumously by virtue of being entombed in the palace, and that on the contrary, it was not the monument which acquired her name, as later day historians would have us believe. The term Mahal is exclusively used in India, is not of Arabic or Persian origin, therefore not of the Mughal period, and contends that it is instead of Sanskrit origin. One can easily identify Mahal as a contraction to the Sanskrit Mahalaya or Mahaalaya, meaning Grand Residence, and when Taj or Tej, meaning a crown, is the qualifying adjective, the term takes on a whole new meaning. Grand Residence of the Crown or Grand Royal Palace, Tejas, is also the Sanskrit term for resplendence and Tajma Mahalaya also means resplendent shrine. The latter contentions would seem to be born out of the immensity and opulence of the Taj Mahal and its environs, which are more consistent with the structure of a palace complex than that of a mausoleum. The Grand Palace no doubt has Hindu origins with a wealth of cooperative detail from the trident of Lord Shiva present on its dome to specific details on its decor. The Taj Mahal has a trident pinnacle over the dome. A full scale of the trident pinnacle is inlaid in the redstone courtyard to the east of the Taj. The central shaft of the trident depicts a kalash holding two bent mango leaves and a coconut. This is a sacred Hindu motif. Identical pinnacles have been seen over Hindu and Buddhist temples in the Himalayan region. Tridents are also depicted against a red lotus background at the apex of the stately marble arched entrance on all four sides of the wonder. People fondly but mistakenly believe all these centuries that the Taj pinnacle depicts a Islamic crescent and star. It was a lightning conductor installed by the British rulers in India. Contrarily, the pinnacle is a marvel of Hindu metalwork since the pinnacle made of non-rusting alloy is also perhaps a lightning deflector and the pinnacle of the replica is drawn in the eastern courtyard is significant because the east is of special importance to the Hindus as the direction in which the sun rises. The pinnacle on the dome has the word Allah on it as inscribed after capture. However, the pinnacle figure on the ground does not have the word Allah. Radiocarbon dating was performed on some door samples taken from the Taj Mahal, and the conclusion to these tests determined that the monument predates the said construction in the 17th century by at least three centuries. Archimetric methods are indubitably a great value in determining the true ages of buildings like the Taj Mahal, and the fact of their inclusion considerably adds to the strength of the theory that this place is much older than we are being led to believe. Radiocarbon dating is based on the measurement of the constant decay of C14 radioactivity in organic materials and is a relatively well-established technique limited, however, to materials such as wood and fibers. Thermoluminescence is another recent technique applicable, among others, to pottery shards, baked brick, and sediments, and is also fairly precise for dates up to the last 3,000 years, but its application requires careful sampling, which is not easily handled by the non-specialist. Other relevant absolute radioactive dating techniques are the relatively new optically stimulated luminescence method and uranium thorium or potassium argon dosage methods. Any or several of these techniques properly applied to the study of the Taj Mahal would unambiguously reveal her true age. It would indeed be in the interest of science, history, and posterity to have a complete study undertaken by competent scientists. The famous Shroud of Turin was believed to have been C-14 dated to a medieval era fabrication, 
but it was later discovered that the portion that was studied was actually added later. Similarly, scientific dating is the only honest, truly objective means of determining when the Taj Mahal was first built, if and when alterations were carried out, and to what extent. This massive complex is also a rich archaeological treasure house that needs to be explored to better understand Indian history and to put all the various myths of whatever origin to rest. This has nothing to do with belittling the achievements of one community or another. For all we know, every one of the stories surrounding the Taj Mahal could be a myth and the truth be elsewhere. The enigmatic structure is scrawled over with 14 chapters of the Holy Quran, but nowhere is there even the slightest or the remotest allusion in that Islamic overriding to the emperor's authorship of the Taj. Had he been the builder and built this place out of love for his lost empress, he would have said so in so many words before beginning to quote from the Quran. Had the emperor really built the Taj Mahal as a wonder mausoleum, history would have recorded a specific date on which his beloved was ceremoniously buried in the Taj Mahal. No such date is ever mentioned. This important missing detail decisively exposes the fallacy of the Taj Mahal legend, and in fact, even the year of her death is unknown. It is variously speculated to be between 1629 and 1640, but had she deserved a fabulous burial, as is claimed, the date of her death had not been a matter of much speculation. Apparently, the date of her death was so insignificant an event as not to merit any special notice. In fact, she was one of many wives of the emperor. The Prophet Muhammad has ordained that the burial spot of a Muslim person should be inconspicuous and must not be marked by even a single tombstone. In flagrant violation of this, the Taj Mahal has one grave in the basement and another in the first floor chamber, both ascribed to the empress. The two centifists were in fact erected by the emperor to bury the two-tier Shiva lingus that were consecrated in the Taj. It is customary for Hindus to install two Shiva lingus, one over the other, in two stories, as may be seen in other Hindu temples in the region. P. N. Oak stated that Taj Mahal should be viewed as a temple palace and not as a tomb. He even goes on to say that the empress is not even buried there. According to him, all the records of the Taj Mahal are just instruments to hide its true origin. To prove his claim, he even filed a petition in the court for permission to break open the centifice and to tear down brick walls in the basement chambers to prove his case. However, his case was rejected by the court and his book outlawed. This place is dating to the 12th century at least and not the 17th century, which was later implied and caught on. It was simply repaired during this period and claimed by a different culture to that of the builders. What do you guys think of this cover up anyway? Comments below and as always, thank you for watching.